there, we've talked a great deal about what's been going on. We've got 1.9 million people who are being displaced, they're being pushed. And, and for a long time, people have been saying, what is the end point? What, uh, what is Israel... Uh, what is Israel's plans as an endpoint? And I think that's being pushed by the UK, by the US and by various other countries. Well, Israel has now unveiled the outline of a plan to rule Gaza after the war. Now, this is what they call a four-corner plan. It was outlined by Yov Galant, who's the defence minister. So the four points are, firstly, there would be a, ma a multinational force which would rebuild Gaza. That's the first thing. Secondly, Israel would take charge of the security of Gaza. There would be no Jewish settlements created there, but the civil governance would come under a Palestinian council. Now, according to the Times of Israel, this would not be the Palestinian authority. Uh, which governs the West Bank. That was expelled in 2006 by Hamas. So there has definitely been movement there. Well, joining us now is Gary Mond, who is the chair of the National Jewish Assembly. Very good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. No, absolute pleasure. And lovely, lovely to talk to you. So, so here we are, a multinational force to rebuild Gaza. We've got a role for Egypt. That was the other point I didn't mention. We don't know quite what that role will be because Egypt controls the Rafa crossing, Israel being in charge of security, a new civil governance body. What, what do you make of that? Because from my reading, that's, isn't that quite a significant shift of Israel's tone? I think the most important thing of all is that Israel it becomes secure and that there will never, ever again be a repetition of what happened on the 7th of October with Palestinians invading Israel and essentially murdering 1,200, even 1,400 people. Rapes well, and, well, of course, they raping. weren't Palestinians. They were a terrorist organisation, weren't they? They were Hamas. Well, they were Palestinians, actually. Um, they, they, Hamas I was just making the distinction between them being and Palestinian citizens. That's what I was just trying to make a distinction. I think that distinction is very blurred, actually, because many, many Palestinians who would not necessarily identify as uh, members of Hamas were nevertheless supporting Hamas in what they actually did. And certainly opinion polls taken in Gaza have said there's massive support for the actions of Hamas on the 7th of October. So I just wanted to say that that distinction is very, very blurred. But as regards the plan itself, what I think the Israeli government is trying to achieve is to ensure that we have security for Israel. And ultimately, we do reach a situation where there is a genuine peace where it is Israelis and Palestinians can live together, work together, and essentially be friends. And that's going to take a long time, but that's the ultimate objective. What do you think of this Four Corner Plan? I think that, well, generally speaking, my organisation doesn't tend to get involved in advising Israel as to what to do. We tend to support whatever the Israeli government does and hope and pray that they are making wise decisions. But strictly speaking, with regard to this plan, I'm sure there's a lot of thought gone into it. And I like the idea in particular of a role for Egypt. Ideally, I think that what would have been best is if Egypt takes complete control the way it had between 1948 and 1967. Um, and uh, that therefore the Egyptian government could be wholly responsible. But Egypt has made it very clear that it doesn't want that role. Indeed. And this is why I'm, I'm slightly surprised, because surely what they're proposing here is a two-state solution. If I look back to the 14th of December, this was Israel's ambassador, Zippy Hotovoli, who said there will be no two-state solution. So this is a huge counterpoint, isn't it? No, I don't agree. I don't think this is actually a two-state solution. We're not proposing to make Palestine an independent state. There already actually is a Palestinian state already, and that's called Jordan. If you look at Jordan's population, it's something like 90% Palestinian and its queen is Palestinian. We're not proposing, and certainly the current Israeli government is completely opposed, as the Israeli ambassador said, to the idea of an independent Palestinian state comprising Gaza uh, and what is Judea and Samaria and the West Bank. And, and why is that? Why is that? Because they believe, firstly, it's a, it's a major security threat to Israel, um, and that, the, that essentially... These, these territories, need, we need to have full discussions as to what the final states of these territories will be. 
and a Palestinian state is, if it's independent and if it's able to have its own military, will pose a tremendously dangerous threat to the state of Israel, which is the key reason why there is such opposition to the idea. So, so obviously this is all based on the idea that Hamas is no longer in control of Gaza. This hasn't been signed off by the Israeli cabinet. How do you think this is going to go down with the international community? It was a fairly short statement, and I just wonder what the US, what the Allies will think of it. I, I think that there will be a lot of opposition to it, but I think that Israel has to take charge of what's in its own best interest from a security perspective. I'm totally opposed to the idea of international uh, politicians uh, trying to undermine the Israeli government strategy. I think that is it, aren't, aren't, Isn't the multinational governments trying to support Israel? In, in, in a sense, they are. But in a, in a longer-term sense, I think Israel knows best. And certainly the idea of having a two-state solution, which is what a lot of people are proposing, is something that Zibi Hotavelli has made clear her government is opposed to. And our organisation, the National Jewish Assembly, backs the Israeli government. But my understanding was the two-state solution was set out back in the 1990s in the Oslo Accord. This was two states living side by side, the West Bank and Gaza forming one side. This was underwritten by the US, for example. Never in the history of international diplomacy has so much support been lavished, lavished on such a failed plan. If this was a plan in the early 1990s, why are we 30 years later and it hasn't happened? Because there hasn't been buy-in. There, there hasn't been buy-in by the local, local uh, entities. Israel certainly, uh, at least when it's seen the results of devolving power to the uh, so-called Palestinian Authority, has seen the disastrous situation that's emerged. Just think, not just what's happened in Gaza, but think of what's happened in, in Judea and Samaria. We've seen the Palestinian Authority being given power, and yet there's massive amounts of terrorist activity. And how uh, do you, you, don't, you don't sort of you don't g g gaze into the crystal ball when you can read the history book? You you said yourself that there would be huge pushback for this four corner plan. How do you think this unfolds over the coming days? I think that there will be some form of, my, my personal opinion is that there will be some form of discussion, but we're way away from that yet. Hamas has to be destroyed first and foremost. But, ma but many people we... say that that is an impossibility, just a, just a practical impossibility to completely destroy Hamas. There's destroying Hamas as an occupying force, as a force that's actually governing, and destroying the idea of Hamas. It's exactly like the Nazi, Nazi Germany. It was possible to destroy Nazi Germany so the Nazis don't control Germany anymore, but it's not possible to control the idea of being a Nazi, and sadly we see plenty of people today who are Nazis. But what you can do is eradicate Hamas as a controlling force, as a controlling power in Gaza, and also eliminate its influence ultimately in Judea and Samaria. Uh, Gary, very good to talk to you. Gary Mon, there, chair of the National Jewish Assembly. What do you make of that? I mean, really, it's. I mean, obviously, it is incredibly polarizing. In some ways, it, it's there. It is a solution. I felt that actually, it, it is closer to a two-state solution. I know Gary didn't agree with me. I think it is, but I think now we've got to the point, you were right to bring up the Oslo Agreement where, you know, actually the people who said no in the Oslo Agreements were the Palestinians. Indeed. Because they've been offered everything almost that they ever wanted, 99% of everything they wanted, but never agree it because they don't want a two-state solution. And I think we must remember that, that, you know, I don't think either party really wants a two-state solution. So if this is actually the solution and comes as close as we can be, then it's better than just we're going to destroy Hamas and we have but no But you're going to have to have the US on board, aren't you? It would seem that way, although I'd say at the moment that Israel are doing quite well at just ignoring the pressure from the US and doing what they feel that they need to do. I, w I wonder for how much longer. Yeah, perhaps. Although I think they are still carrying on and they carried out a very strategic um, attack this week to remove one of the leaders Indeed. of Hamas who wasn't even in Gaza. That's so right, I in think, Lebanon. Yeah, I think they are very determined to go about dismantling Hamas as far as they can. And, and I think that there is real concern here about, you know, whether there is escalation in, in the wider sense. Of course, we know Iran is behind a lot of these terrorist organisations as well, as you mentioned, the missile strike in Lebanon as well. Uh, also, the role of the Houthis in the Red Sea, blocking all the cargo, of course, the impact Which on global trade. Which is now involved in America. We, exactly. So, so I think there is an element of trying of containment at the same time, but there will need to be some sort of international uh, compromise. I mean, 
I, it's almost an intractable problem because, and I, I think Gary makes a good point, it's been going on for so long, yep. but at the same time we can't just have the status quo because it doesn't work. No, it doesn't work and actually there has to be a solution for the two million people who are living in Gaza at the moment under the most horrific conditions. But I think they also have to come to that party and understand that Israel are going to defend themselves if people amongst them decide to carry out terrorist attacks. Mm.